Well, we just heard from Turner Gill, and now we welcome in Margot Gill, coach's daughter and a contributor to the show. And Margot, recently you let our cameras into your home to see a side of the Gill family we really haven't gotten to see before. Absolutely, Matt. You know, being a football coach's daughter is not something that I chose, but it's also not something that I would change even if I could. I sat down with my father, Turner Gill, to share an inside perspective of our lifestyle. The coaching profession is known for being tough on families, but a lot of people still don't understand how demanding it is. How do you prioritize your time between family and work? Just like everything else you do in football, you, you kind of write down what your plan is, and so I had to write down my plans to add my, my daughters and my wife uh, into my plans each and every week and each and every day. So starting in Nebraska, I mean, I was pretty spoiled there. I went to my first spoiled, national huh? championship <laughs> at two months old, and I'd been to three by the time I was four. So I want to know, what was the most fun for you during that time period? Well, I think the most fun for me was just uh, getting an opportunity to see you uh, before the game, after the game, and, and seeing your smile and, and getting a hug and, and just enjoying that experience that we had and to share that with you. Another thing about Nebraska were the bowl games. And I didn't realize until I was nine years old that not every team went to a bowl game every year because that was just something that we did as a coach. What was the bowl game experience like for you? Well, the bowl game, I think number one was still work <laughs> as far as they go. But it also was a great thing for us to uh, experience with our family members to come and be a part of that. Gail had shared with me a story during the game that um, you were watching it, and um, I think they had some penalty came up, and there were 12 people on the field, and you wonder why they threw this flag, uh, so to speak. And uh, she said, well, you know, you can only have 11 people, and then you can. So then the for all on, you were very, very analytical. You were really paying attention to detail, so you were always counting whether well, there are 11 people on the field, and you were always wanting to do that as you were younger. Yeah, and so another thing is we would have players over to the house, and one player that stands out was Eric Crouch. What was it like to coach a Heisman Trophy winner? Fun. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of determination by Eric. Uh, very, very talented young man, tough uh, mentally and physically. He was very, very tough. The blessings that God gave him was uh, he, he didn't get hurt. It was amazing. 185 pound, 190 pound guy took all those hits and uh, was still able to manage to, to be successful as a, as a person and also as a football player. And you resigned from Nebraska without having an, another job. Was there ever any uh, concern about what would that would be like for your family, with you technically being unemployed? You know, really that was uh, probably a little bit of a defining moment for us. I was kind of holding back God as I was always stating that I'm never going to move. I'm never going to leave Nebraska. I'm going to stay here because I don't want my family to move. And I was very comfortable. Uh, we as a family were very, very comfortable. That's not why God wanted us to live. It's comfortable. That's, that's not even nowhere in the, in the scripture. But I just really said, I'm going I'm to I'm walk by the, the word of faith uh, with God. I remember Gail and I, and I talking, and she, I said, hey, wherever God, I said, I don't know where to go. We may not be in, I may not be in the coaching profession, uh, and that's okay, uh, because we're going to honor God, and we're going we're gonna to do the things that he wants us to do as a family. Well, it didn't take long, and then you got a job with the Green Bay Packers. And for me, our time there was short and sweet, but for me, I loved it. Lambeau Field every Sunday. But I want to know what the biggest difference for you was coaching in the NFL as opposed to NCAA. It was a great experience for me. Uh, I think it helped me to where I'm at today. I was the liaison, basically, to the head coach and to the general manager. So it was a great um, link for me to see both sides of it from the administrative side of it in the NFL, and then also got to see it from the X's and O's side, coaches side of it too. When uh, Aaron Rodgers uh, got drafted, uh, I was in those meetings. You know, it was some things going on, making decisions on uh, whether they're going to take a defensive guy or whether they're going to take um, uh, Aaron Rodgers. So they ended up choosing uh, Aaron Rodgers, and we can all say the rest is history. Well, a quick seven months later, um, you got your first head coaching job, the University at Buffalo. They were 119th out of 119 teams, and by the third year, they were 40th in the nation. So why do you think that you were able to be so successful so quickly? i got to give honor to God. Um, he gave me a plan. I came up with the Belize statement and really had them to know it and believe it and trust it uh, and so that they could be inspired by something that they could live by. And uh, so they really took it to heart. They still took it to a, a higher level as far as really, truly talking to each other. Uh, that they believed in what they could get done. And then next was Kansas. And what most people probably don't know is that my older sister, Jordan, your oldest daughter, was actually a sophomore at KU when you got offered the job. So did you ever consider not taking the job because that was kind of her school? Or did you see that as an opportunity to kind of reunite your family? 
Well, all those things that you just mentioned were all went through our head. There's no question about it. Obviously, Gail and I, we prayed about it and talked about it. And um, But they had just come off of struggling a couple of years. And so they needed some things to get regenerated, kind of like the same thing with Buffalo. It was really, truly a, a blessing from the standpoint of being able to be with uh, Jordan at 18 and 22 years old and be able to spend some quality time. And because a lot of people don't have that opportunity. So it was a very exciting time to, to be a part of Kansas while she was there at school. Honestly, I think that was the one place where I kind of got a greater appreciation for your job, specifically that last night when we went to the, your office to pack it up. And every single player came and lined up down the hall through the building and just to hug you, say bye, cry with you. And so I think that that really just kind of opened up my mind to everything that you do for your players and gave me a greater appreciation for that. So what positives did you take away from your experience at Kansas? All the positives, no question, is relationships. Um, you know, I, I still stay in contact with some of them. And so those young men that really saw me every single day, they know the value uh, that I had, we had as a staff with them because they're still staying in contact with us. And some of them are still, they want to get into coaching. And they were stated some of those reasons why they want to get into coaching. It's because the way our staff did things, the way they went about going about teaching them about life, teaching them about the game of football and how to continue to do things in a great way no matter what the circumstances are. You were going to take a year off from coaching um, after Kansas because you were going to let me finish my senior year of high school there, but then Liberty called. So what really drew you to Liberty besides getting your family's approval? This one here was a true calling for God uh, because uh, really was <laughs> kind of set in stone just to kind of kick back, lay back, go play some golf and kind of hang out for a while and keep the boys away from you and all that in my senior, senior year. Jeff Barber and all of them came in and talked to uh, Gail and I and, and uh, you know, talked about their vision, talked about their mission and what they wanted to accomplish and um, thought that I would be the right person to help them accomplish the things that God has called them to do here at Liberty University. We talked a little bit and they said, well, we want to bring you back to Lynchburg uh, tomorrow <laughs> uh, and they want to know if we wanted to do that. And so, uh, you know, we agreed and said yes and I said, well, we got to Got to be my whole family, and uh, they agreed to take the whole family. We all came here together and visited and talked again and uh, uh, went back. I remember I went, we ate, and then we went back to the hotel and said, well, I need to talk to my family here a little bit and uh, just to make sure that we're all on the same page and this is what God has called all of us uh, to do and still want to see if I really was I ready to take on another challenge. And God called me that, yes, uh, Turner, we need you to be at Liberty University. So I thank God for the opportunity, and, and uh, we're ready to move on. Well, I mean, you know that I've always said that the worst day of my life is going to be when you retire because I love cheering for your teams, being there, supporting you. And so I just want to thank you for providing everything for me and being there as a father and as well as for all the young men that you coach and lives that you've changed. Well, thank you. Give me a hug there. <laughs> Love you. Love you too. <laughs> you know, oftentimes we think of coaches and we judge them solely on wins and losses. We view them only by what's happening on the field. We don't think about the families that are behind the scenes that are really like extended parts of, of the coaching staff and really helping the coach throughout these situations. Yeah, absolutely. The family is just as much a part of the team as the coaches are. Wins and losses affect us just the same. So, yeah. Now, I got to ask you, you've interviewed a number of people. What's it like interviewing your dad, though? Was it different? Was it harder than interviewing, say, some player? Um, I mean, I think it was a little bit easier because we were talking about our story, so I kind of knew um, a little bit about what he was going to say, but it was a lot of fun. I mean, I would say I'm close with my dad, but I don't think we've ever had a conversation like that, just talking about our um, journey together, and so it was a lot of fun, and I think he enjoyed it, too. Well, thank you so much for letting us be a part of it, and a great job. We look forward to seeing more from you in the future. Thank you. Brett, over to you.